Aqua Force is finally making waves as the one who surpasses the storm is here. Hey car fighters, welcome back to another Carfield update and today we've got some new reveals for VBT-11 Storm of the Blue Cavalry. And with all the other reveals already to us, that leaves of course Aqua Force left. And today we've got those reveals for Tavis as well as his support cards and the long and anticipated Lembros. But besides that, we also got some new set news and information for the other sets that is coming after this set. So let's jump straight into those reveals and then work our way up to the new card reveals. So the first important news update that we've got is all surrounding the new Daigle special set. And one of those information is basically what the card rarity in the set is going to be. And basically what we're going to get in this set is one copy of a special higher rarity of all the main units. So we're going to get one VR treatment of Sanctuary Guard. And all the main support line units are going to get one triple R foiling on the card. All the other copies are going to be common versions, so nothing really special. So if you want to bling out your entire deck, you're going to need to buy four copies of this set. Now there is one more interesting thing that comes to a surprise for this set, as they revealed a special inclusion for this set. As every Daigle set will contain one inclusion of this full art special artwork of Laurel Knights Sicilius. So this is going to be a reprint of the Great Free Searcher, but it's a nice new artwork as well as a pretty nice SP full art version of that artwork. So it's a nice inclusion for the Daigo set, especially seen as the, these cards are staples for every single clan. So it's a nice addition to have that in the set. So look forward to that as well if you are a Royal Paladin player. Now the other new information that we've got is for the upcoming Bermuda Triangle set, Twinkle Melody. And we've now got some more information of the box topper. We already knew that every box will contain a draw PG and we also have the reprints of Lisa Lot and Aurora, the trial deck uh, cards that are very uh, universal for the clan. But now we've also got the news that there are going to be two special box toppers which could be in your box. So you get either one of the two and one of those is actually the Great Free Searcher. So it's very likely that this Great Free Searcher is going to be very easy to obtain as there's a 50-50 chance that it's at least one copy in your box. Now the skill is just the typical Great Free Searcher and her way to get another additional 5k power is basically if there's another unit in your column where this unit resides. So somewhat of a Harmony-esque skill but not necessarily the same. So it's a very easy class to fulfill. Now the other card is Aqua but we have no clue of what that skill is going to be and i believe that these cards not only are a box topper they also will be in the set so i believe she's still going to be a trip r just like all the other great free searchers but at least there is an easy way to get her and she'd probably be one of the most cheapest versions to get also another information that we've got is that this set will contain support for the already existing archetype so coral uh, Melody, Highlander, of course Highlander because we have the legendary Eidorer, but also Riviere, all those archetypes are going to get supported in this set. So it's not only the new VRs that we've seen with our new builds, but also more support for already existing archetypes. So with, that is a pretty nice new information for existing Bermuda Triangle players that really liked our previous deck. Now with those news out of the way, let's jump straight into the new Aqua Force reveal cards because these cards are pretty interesting and are somewhat unexpected in the way that they are pl being played out. And the first card that they revealed to us was the new Grade 1 support card, which is Kelpie Rider Nikki, which I believe was the original Grade 3 Searcher for Tavis, the Stride Father, and its skills is Auto and Vanguard Circle, when placed, look at the seven cards from the top of your deck, reveal to one, one who surpasses a storm, Savas, or Kelpie Rider, Dennis. That's the grade two in this right, uh, right chain. From among them, put them into your hand and shuffle your deck. So this skill is identical to the grade one that works with Luwars that could give 
you the grade 2 that could superior call grade 1, I believe, Leofall. This basically is the same, but unlike the one in Luart, you actually want to play the grade 2 in the main Tavis build. So you actually will have 8 targets to hit, and you actually also want to play this card because its second ability is very important for the Tavis, aka Lambros deck. So... It is going to be a vital key piece in this engine. And that's because of its second skill is act on rear circle, cost, rest this unit, and put a normal unit from your drop zone on the bottom of your deck and soul charge one. Any Gear Chronicle player out there can already guess where this is hinting towards because we know that Lambros is a great four. So this is probably the same way as that we've seen with Quickie Quickie Worker that this card allows you to put Lambros back into your deck after it's uh, you either accidentally drawn into them or they are put into the drop zone if, if, via any other way. So that's a nice addition to what it does. But that rest ability comes in handy once we go to the other cards. But overall, this card is perfect for the Tavis build. It searches our main right targets, it allows us to synergize with the engine, it helps with our main thing that we want to do, and on top of that, it gives us soul, which could fuel for other cards that need soul, like Tidal Assault or Nerissa, which can interact with these resting cards abilities that we're gonna see. Now, the second card in this right chain is a grade two, which is Kelpie Rider Dennis, and its ability is act on Vanguard or Rearguard Circle, cause rest another rearguard, so not himself, look at the top card of your deck, and call it to the rearguard circle. This ability may only be used by a card with the same card name once per turn. So a hard once per turn clause. So on paper, you could say this is a free plus one as you get the top call. But if you cannot synergize it with other card effects, it's somewhat of a soft plus as you don't get another card onto the board that you can actually use because the other card you just rested one onto the board so that cannot boost or attack. And you have no insight inside of what you're actually going to call. There's a highly likely chance that you accidentally rest a unit and get a worse unit on the board. You could rest a grade 1 as a booster and get a grade 2 while all your front rows are already filled up or you maybe get a trigger. So you don't really have consistent value off of this card. But if you combine this card with the Tavis engine, then that suddenly flips around and it's basically 100% a plus no matter what you get because you don't care. But you can also com combine this with something like Battle Siren Nerissa. You could target Nerissa, rest her with this ability, get a top card, and then use Nerissa for the Soul Blast to resend her and she becomes an 18k attacker or booster. And if you combine that with the Great One that we just discussed, you could fuel the Soul for Nerissa. So there's this interesting engine with these cards going on here but let's take a look at Tavis and see where this resting comes into play because so far we only see Revan interacting with rested card but you can just attack with Revan in the main in the battle phase and it still is suffice now once we look at Tavis we can see the following skills as here we have one who surpasses the storm Tavis and Tavis abilities are act on Vanguard or rearguard circle once per turn cause rest a rearguard Choose up to one of your opponent's rearguards and retire it. So where the grade 2 gives you a card onto the board, this one takes away a card from your opponent's side of the field. In just a vacuum side of things, I think that this skill is more powerful than the grade 2. Because now you at least have control over what the trade is going to be. I don't need this booster, but I want to get rid of that grade 2 on your board. Or I don't need this attacker, but I want to get rid of, the of your attacker that's very integral to your engine. This will give you much more bang for your buck than the grade 2. But that doesn't really matter if we take a look at Tava's second ability. As its second ability is Auto and Vanguard Circle. At the beginning of your battle phase, if three or more of your rearguards are rest, cause discard a card from your hand, search your deck for up to one grade four card, write it to stand, shuffle your deck, and that unit gets power plus 10k, drive plus one until the end of turn. At the end of this turn, retire that unit and write a grade three card from your soul as rest. Okay, before we go into this whole thing for the skill and see how good it is, Bushi! Can you, for the love of God, stop giving other clans the Gear Chronicle mechanic? What do we have left? You already gave Luard this shit. Now you're gonna give it to Tavis for Aqua Force. I mean... Like, clan, our clan identity is basically out of the window because apparently everybody is gonna get it. 
Okay, that rant over, let's analyze this skill, how good this actually is. Over on paper, it gives 10k and an extra drive, which is actually a lot of value definitely for a discard because you're going to get the discard back. Also keep in mind that this is an Axel deck. So if you went for Axel 2 and you rewrite back into this at the end of the turn, you also get the draw of the Axel 2. So not only do you get the discard back in a triple drive, you also going to get another draw out of the second Axel 2 marker you're going to generate if you go with Axel 2, that is. If you go Axel 1, this is not the case. And I'm already going to spoil this. Lambros doesn't have an Axel marker. So you're not going to get something like we've seen with Luart. So at least, at least Bougereau didn't fuck us over in that sense now with this skill himself there is a small issue here but at the same time this makes sense what the rest of the deck wants to do in order to achieve this skill you need to rest three or more of your rear guards before you go into the battle phase so that means you need to have different key pieces in your hand or on the field that allows you to rest the cards in the main phase we have the grade one we have the grade two and now tavis can also do this so this right chain is at the utmost important for Tavus in order to get its superior right effect life. Now there are some other cards in, in Aquaforce that does this as well. We've got Tenesis, the grade 2 common of the previous set with Revan. That allows us to rest a card for free and it gets itself plus 5k. There's also a common in this set, a grade 2, that for a counterblast can rest 2 cards and give itself plus 10k. So you have either a 40k beater that rests 1 or a 19k beater that rests 2 for a counterblast. And we also have a Signal Pingwin, the grade one of the very first set for Aqua Force that can rest itself to give a unit in the same column plus 5k power and it can also retire itself for a counter charge so there are definitely multiple cards that allows us to rest more cards on the field so in order to chase it but that means that this deck is definitely very peace reliant if you cannot get those pieces this skill won't activate and the, another thing that comes up with this is that I talked about Battle Siren and Nerissa with the previous Grade 1 and Grade 2 that there is a nice synergy here. But at the same time, Nerissa does conflict with this skill. Because if you dedicate those rest skill onto Nerissa to then recent herself, that means you just negated the whole resting thing and you probably cannot achieve the condition for Tavis to actually do the superior ride. So there are some issues here and especially as seen that some of these resting cards have once per turn skills like finesses or hard once per turn skills like help you ride a dentist with that said let's take a look at lambros because we're doing all this to get into lambros which gets an extra drive stick and 10k power but what exactly does he do so here we have the new vr grade 4 marine general of heavenly silk lambros and its abilities are continuous from hand if you have a vanguard with Tavis in its card name, this card get grade minus one. So potentially if you are sitting on Tavis, you could next turn just ride it from hand if you want to do that. Don't know why, it, you still stayed on a grade three for that single turn, but that's not really what's the issue. But the point here is, it basically allows you to call this thing to the rigor circle as it's a grade three. So you could have a 15k beater on this side if you need to be. It's not the greatest, but at least it... It allows you to do that. Its main features come from the fact that you can ride into him as a Vanguard unit, as its skills are auto and Vanguard Circle. When placed, choose any number of rear guards and stand them. So basically, what you want to do is rest as many rear guards onto the board so you could achieve to have a skill to get into this card and then resend all those cards. So you're just doing the rested thing just in order to get into this thing and then he negates all the costs that you just paid and in some cases you get some value Tavis gives you a free retire the grade 2 gives you a free plus but could be a useless card could be a trigger or a grade 1 or a grade 2 that you don't have the space for and you have the grade 1 that could give you a free soul charge and some other cards gives you some free 5k or 10k power on the board not major value but if you keep adding these things up together it could be at least something on the board here. Then we got the main attraction for this card, which is his third skill, which is Auto and Finger Circle. When this unit attacks, cost Counter Bless 1 and Soul Bless 1, choose a column, stand all of your rear guards in that column, and if your opponent's Vanguard is great for your greater, those rear guards get power plus 5k until the end of turn. So this card effectively is just a column restand and could be another plus 10k power onto that. Depending on those units, it could be uh, somewhere in a ballpark of 20 to 30k. But if you have something like a Coral Assault with a 18k or 13k or something of those magnitude of a booster behind it, then that column could potentially be in the 50 to 60k as a last resort attack. So there 
is a potential year, uh, but overall it's just one extra attack. There is an interesting interaction with this card, because it allows you to reset the entire column. If you combine it with wheel salt, and to be precise, two different wheel salts on the board, you could potentially put two grade twos in a column, then restand that entire column, and then swap at the end of the battle a grade two to the front row, so effectively you could generate two extra attacks out of this, but that... That it, in order to get that off, you need to have the perfect head because not only do you need to have two wheel salts on the board or in your hand, you also need to have enough cards that allows you to rest all your cards so you could go into Lambro. So it's a nice interaction, a neat interaction, but is it the most consistent? I am not really convinced here. Now to summarize what this deck basically wants to do, you just rest cards in order to achieve Tavis Condition, then you go into Lambros, that then restand all those cards, you get somewhat free value here and then you can effectively restand one column now don't get me wrong this is a pretty solid deck it does what it wants to do it just splashes onto your opponent's face it's also pretty aggressive because it's not really restricted about the fact that your opponent needs to be grade free only the extra 5k power in those units but let's be honest that's probably not gonna make the world of a difference here so let you can just shove that away for now and it can be very aggressive as it allows you to get potentially a free plus, a free retire, and a little bit of power and one extra attack for a counter blast and a soul blast. But in order to get that, you need to run great force in your main deck. And uh, speaking of experience with, great, uh, with Gear Chronicle, those great force can be quite annoying because those are probably dead draws, in, especially in the early game. And if you accidentally draw them too early, then you might not be able to get them back. Yes, you have the grade one, but if you cannot get to the grade one, then you're still a little bit screwed. Now, also a major problem what I see here with this particular deck is that this Tavis deck really reminds me of Lost Legend to a certain degree. Because the Lost Legend deck has a had a gimmick that you want to bind as many cards as possible so you could use your Mystery Flare as consistent as possible. In order to do that, you need to run a surplus of binding cards that, force, that focus on just binding cards from your hand. But because you did that, your entire deck lacked some kind of pushing power or basically to close the game. It was really reliant on the fact that your great fours needed to finish the game. I get the same vibe with this card or this deck because you need to run so many cards that can rest your field in the main phase so you eventually can use this card and then you need to rely on this card to then reset all those cards and do its thing. But you're not really multi-attacking all that much. Because you're sacrificing your grade twos and grade one slots for those resting abilities, so you don't have them so you don't have the widest range of opportunity to play your Elgos, your Tidal Salts, or Coral Salt. You can play some, but I don't believe you have enough space to facilitate all those powerful cards that we are used to for Aqua Force. So that's where I'm kind of on the fence about how strong this deck actually is going to be. It's definitely good, but it's I was expecting a little bit more of the poster guy for this set, especially since they're stealing Gear Chronicles Limel Limelight. Now, another thing that's interesting here that I want to bring up here is that these cards somewhat synergize with Revan. And Revan almost feels as powerful as this deck for a couple of reasons. One, Lambros, yes, gets an extra drive check and 10k power, so it's a 25k triple drive check attack on the Vanguard Circle. But... Revan gets plus 15k and a drive check, so it's 27k and triple drive, so in the same ballpark here, and it could potentially get a critical, but on top of that, Revan isn't really reliant on other cards that can rest himself in the main phase, so he can just focus on cards that can just multi tech so he can push out way more power and way more aggression in the early game, and ironically, the grade 2 triple R for Tavis works actually pretty good with Revan as it gets you the free plus and you don't really mind that. Also thing here is that Revan gives your opponent an extra minus 5k power. This means all your units or all your attacks will get a passive plus 5k power. This is also translated to Revan. So Revan is not a 27k triple drive potentially double crit finger attack. It's actually 32. So it's already po more powerful than Lambros. Yes, it cannot restand a column or a unit, but... Revan can just run those multi-tech cards without any inconsistency issues. And on top of that, 
Revan doesn't really need to run a brick card that is a grade 4 and needs to rely on, great, on a grade 1 support card that can keep shoving that card back into the deck to actually get into your main combo. So... There is some, some discussion here. You could say that Revan is actually as good as Lambros, or maybe Revan is a little bit better, or maybe a little bit weaker for a certain degree, because yes, the Tavis deck has a higher room to high roll. They have more opportunities to become way stronger if they get all their pieces correctly, like the Wheel of Salt combo that I explained, but there's also more room that this whole thing just falls in up, um, upon itself, because it's way more piece-reliant than anything that we've seen before. But that basically sums up everything that I think of the Lambros cards. Don't get me wrong, I think they're actually pretty powerful, but because they have a gear chronicle like mechanic, I needed to address certain points that might be overlooking to some uh, to some people because it's similar to Luart to some extent because Luart has a superior right thing, but Luart is a little bit different because it goes from a great free into a great free, and both these great frees do not really care for each other. They can be run in, separate from each other, and you can write into them separately without actually being in a lot of issues here this is not the case with gear chronicle with great force and also not the case with lambros if you have lambros in your hand but you have no tavis you're basically screwed and that's not the case with luard they could potentially just go into the other luard no problem and still do something of their game plan now there's one more card that i want to highlight here before i end this video and that is a new promo card and i believe a promo card that is for a shop uh, monthly shop tournament and that is a new link joker promo and the, and the reason why i want to highlight this card is because this promo is actually pretty insane if you if you analyze the skill because here we have a new grade one hard sword of polarization lek ren jart and its abilities are auto and vanguard circle when placed cost put a card from your hand on rearguard circle as a locked card and draw a card so you lock a card from hand that's the cost and then you draw a card now it also has a second ability which is act on rearguard circle once per turn Cost counter blast one and unlock one of your locked cards if you unlock the card soul charge one this card is basically a combination of the grade one unhitter that allows you to then put a unit onto the board locked in a draw card and the great free order card that allows you to immediately unlock a card so this single-handedly does everything that you want to do in order to cheat out volcode as fast as possible and crazy enough, if you have two of these cards in your opening hand with Volko, you can have a turn one Volko on the board. Because you can write this thing, put the Volko as locked onto the board, draw a card, and then call another copy, and then basically unlock it. Of course, it cannot be exactly turn one because you need to counter blast, but you get the gist of what I'm trying to explain here. So this card is pretty good and you do have the room and you do have the room to run this in your grade one slot as you can just replace it with the grade one that needs to hit this is probably a better iteration of that card and it also somewhat replaces or could work combined with the order cards so you have more consistency for your full code card or any other card that you might put locked with your neo with your messiah and because this card allows you to soul charge it could potentially help you to set up soul for your VR messiah that uses soul to do its play. So it's a pretty interesting new tech choice and could potentially be a very good staple card for the new messiah deck if this card allows it to be still mana reliant. So yeah, pretty interesting new promo card. And with that, we basically conclude all the new information and the new card reveals that was revealed today in today's live stream. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of these new cards for Aqua Force. I, I know I wasn't the most excited about these cards, but that's basically because of the... Yet again, another clan tries to cheat our clan mechanic, but because of that, I need to be very critical about them. Yes, the deck looks pretty solid, but there's definitely some consistency issues that makes this deck at least fair. I think it's strong, but definitely not as OP as some and myself had thought it to be, especially since we came back of the whole Luard issues. But at the same time, that's actually very reassuring that it looks pretty fair. It looks good, it looks interesting, it looks new but not overpowered which is a good thing but let me know your thoughts in the comments down below because maybe you actually think that this new tavis lambros deck is insane it's overpowered it's nuts let me know your thoughts and your opinions 
all in the comment section down below. As always, this video has been brought to you by our lovely Patreons over at patreon.com slash Insider. You guys are amazing. If you do want to support the channel or everything that's happening on the channel, you can simply go to patreon.com slash Insider and become a Patreon today. But with that said, I'm Mr. Time Leap, and I'll see you guys in the next one!